Watches have become a really big thing in the tactical and EDC community. I mean it always has been, but the topic of wristwatches usually took a backseat when compared to the talk surrounding knives and bags and other things. I'm glad that it has in some ways because it pulls a lot of interest into a relatively niche subject. You're all ticking. Unlike their previous owners. Got anything good? I've never been a luxury watch guy, and contrary to popular perception, lots of military and gov guys aren't either. We're just like everyone else and not immune to advertising. We will buy what we see presented as a luxury item, like Rolex and Omega, from what our friends hype up and deem useful or nice to have like Suntos and Garmin's, and other areas like pop culture that influence our decisions. So what makes an effective field watch, duty watch, work watch, whatever you want to call it? How do you select one to carry and wear every day and why? That depends completely on the end user's budget and needs. I will focus on the types of watches and go over pros and cons of each. There's a wide gulf between being ready for engagements in Afghanistan, training foreign troops, or working in the stateside office, so best becomes relative. I know I've talked about watches by model and other equipment related videos, but this should cover a wider perspective of the tool watch. I've broken the types of watches into three categories. The first category is the fastest growing, but also arguably the least durable and secure of all three options, the smartwatch. Because of tech advancements, I will also include the common tactical offerings like Garmin and Suunto watches in this category as well, and I'll get to why. Now my daily carry is a Garmin Instinct, and I use it just to track my workouts and sleep patterns. I like the extra information on myself like my average daily activity metrics. You have real-time biometric health tracking available as well. For some individuals, just knowing your heart rate average over the week would allow you and your doctor to know whether to adjust lifestyle or medication, or point out growing concerns about overall health. Yes, that pro isn't related to the end of the world, but it could be the end of your world if you have anything medically wrong, so it's a useful tool in this regard. If you need other information such as elevation, humidity, or distance traveled, these watches shine. And that's about it for my list of pros. The cons are immediately apparent. Checking your email on a watch isn't a convenience. The distance between the watch and your phone has to be relatively close. Chances are, if you really need to look at a message or email, you can look at your phone. Reading an email on the tiny watch is not ideal and you can miss important messages or attachments. The battery life of most watches ranges from one day in Apple's case to one week. If you can't get a charge in that time frame, that watch is useless. Not a big problem in the city, but if you work in semi-rural or rural zones, keep this in mind, especially if you're away from a quick charging power source. There are solar capable models, but a hard enough hit on the watch face can render it useless if you crack the screen. Even workout apps that track your route can highlight areas of interest if you haven't configured something as simple as your profile correctly. I guarantee that it can be tracked if someone with resources to do so wanted to. If your work involves sensitive areas, you should know better since your electronic devices will be an information liability and not any kind of an asset in this regard. This is just a short list that doesn't even involve EMPs, aliens, or discussions about the industrial revolution being a bad thing. To sum up modern smartwatches, including the tactical types that are popular within the community, know that if you need to track biometric data for health reasons, these are very useful. Tracking workouts, also useful. Anything else, probably best to stow it away. Especially if you're in a field where security is paramount, it should be a constant reminder that the current issues we face aren't coming from a technologically disadvantaged group of people who are waging a guerrilla war in a desert or cluster of mountains. I am aware that there are digital watches, even a model from the venerable G-Shock line, that include things like Bluetooth and GPS connectivity, but please lump that in with smartwatches. If you haven't lost it. Digital watches are the workhorse of the everyman. You will find all kinds of different models on the wrists of tradesmen, military, police, med staff, farmers. For anybody who needs a simple tool, this category will do. There are no frills, just time, date, and the expectation that you don't have to worry about it, and if it gets ruined somehow, you're not out hundreds or even thousands of dollars. 
I mean you can be, but chances are if you're paying north of $200 for a G-Shock model, you're dabbling with getting higher end hardware, and you're probably into watches and know what you're getting into anyway. <clears throat> One more time again. I've gone through several different models of G-Shock watch, and you can still buy the OG model for $50. I had a green one in Afghanistan that I threw away because I learned the hard way how certain chemicals can break the resin of the watch down. And this MTG that I bought as a boot finally decided to give up the ghost, at least halfway. Bringing it into the light will reactivate and charge it, but the buttons no longer work, and I can't set the time or get it to light up. Amazingly, my cheap W87H that I got maybe 20 years ago is still kicking, and I just gifted my F91W that I used to show visitors to a nurse friend who needed a reliable way to track time and heartbeats on the fly. The negative display on this other Casio is just cool, and as much money as you think Jocko makes, he still rocks an old school Iron Man, and it serves him well. You should be getting the idea that if you like reliable, accurate, and robust watches, then this is your stop. So despite all this praise, what are the cons? I have one major one, and it's not based on looks because I'm well aware that most digital watches aren't exactly the most aesthetic. I know some of you will say, I don't care what anyone thinks. If you're in an occupation where the optics don't matter as much as practicality, excellent. You do you. If you're in a field where the littlest thing you do, say, or appear as, gets scrutinized, then life gets complicated in other ways. He's touring the planet right now. Let's not pretend that it doesn't happen. These are real issues that people face. You may not be some kind of shadow diplomat or bureaucrat. Well, your highness, I want control. But maybe you are on the professional side of things. Maybe your week includes regular meetings with C-suite types or medical administrators. Maybe you feature prominently in media or broker those behind the scenes deals where a company's investments or reputation is on the line. You know then that taking the folksy and everyman approach might tank any chances you had at success. The more you understand people, the better you can plan these things out. That means you already know what I'm about to say. Some people, at these levels, will regard you as the help rather than as the peer if you show up wearing something that doesn't meet the perception. So instead of using the FAFO method, it's prudent to err on the side of caution. That usually means, in these circumstances, the digital goods stay home and analog watches come out. Be aware of your audience. Analog watches are tricky because you can go from ultra cheap to flat out excessive, at least from the average Joe's perspective. I mean, if you have 30k to drop at a Rolex authorized dealer, then you do you. Keep in mind what I said earlier about your line of work. Use that to keep things in perspective here. The benefits of having an analog watch are subtle and not so much on the performance side of things, but a little more on the social engineering side. If you're selecting an analog watch and want to focus on performance, for accuracy's sake, get a watch with a battery-powered quartz movement. They can be found incredibly cheap and quartz movements are still more accurate than manual or automatic wind watches. A nice solid stainless steel watch with muted or small logos are a good start. Now if you like the classical traditional style watches or you can't have anything that generates an electrical charge, now you're looking at automatic or mechanical wind watches. Automatics are wound through your movement and manual wind watches require you to make it a daily ritual, but there are different tiers to this. Your average automatic watch will most commonly be a Seiko, either a new or old 5 series or one of the many diver watches. Only hardcore watch guys will be able to pick out what type of diver you have, but they're reliable and lots of military guys use these to go from field to suit. We can thank James Bond for making a dive watch okay to use with a suit. <laughs> Of course, he either had a Rolex or Omega, but that's because of his budget. Ah, model. I dressed up an old Seiko as a modern interpretation of the SOG style, complete with a compass with the metal strap retention. I also have my Seiko that's been with me since I returned from Afghanistan that was gifted to me by my friend. These are watches you can also pass on to someone or to commemorate a special occasion. Oh man. 
I give the watch to you. For dressier events, I had a Tracer watch once upon a time, but sold it when I needed extra money while providing my dad with hospice support. I was able to make a bill payment with that. And that's another thing to consider with these watches. They cost a lot, but will retain some value and can be used in emergencies, as long as you're very discerning with your model picks. That's going to take more than superficial research. Obviously get one you can enjoy, but also keep emergency cash flow in mind. You just never know. And that's ultimately something you can't really do with an Apple Watch or a digital watch. Also, if we're going to keep SHTF in the back of our minds, there's nothing to fry with an EMP or solar flare. No battery to account for, and no electrical signature unless you have a weird hybrid like my Seiko Kinetic that I got in 1999. Depending on the watch's movement, as the guts of the watch are called, there's variability in time gained or lost per day and you'll have to reset them occasionally. Depending on how fast or slow the movement is, you may have to reset the time every month or week or maybe even more if it's a very loose Vostok. Those are very interesting and fun Russian watches by the way. Servicing a traditional watch can also get pricey. Generally, the more you paid, and especially if the movement is a proprietary in-house machine, the more you'll pay to keep it running, just like a European luxury car. As I said, if you're dead set on accuracy, a digital watch or a quartz movement is for you. If you're around people who will notice or in a field where these things matter so that you can fit into the so-called club, then having a nice watch and knowing its history can get you very far. It might seem like I've spent an inordinate amount of time on analog watch positives, and it's true, I have. Digital and smart watches are easier to break down into modern life divisions, but not so with analogs. You can literally create entire channels and IG pages based on traditional analog watches and the people who wear them. If you want to get into interesting watch specifics and interesting stories of interesting times and interesting people, check out watches of espionage on IG. You'll be in for a treat, I guarantee it. So be aware of your needs. That will help you select which watch will be the right tool for the job. Regarding belonging to the club, remember, it is a tool. Once you've established rapport and are known within the circles you need to be known within, you don't have to keep wearing the showpiece. Show up in whatever is necessary, comfortable, and does the job for you. If you appreciate watches as art and like wearing your best as much as you can, do so. If you like wearing nice suits and pairing it with a Casio F91 under your sleeve, great. Maybe this is a hint that you need different tools for different jobs. In any case, remember this, after a certain point it becomes the person wearing the watch that dictates whether it's acceptable or not in that scenario. Jocko can show up at a business meeting wearing his trademark Iron Man and no one will say anything. Bill Clinton used a Timex as the United States President. Bill Gates currently uses a Casio dive watch that costs less than $100. Be worthy of being listened to. Be part of the apex of your ladder of development and you'll be free to choose as you like. Until the next time, be good, stay safe, and have a good one.